Yes, class. Am I audible to all of you? Austin, Fia, Humam, Tari. Yes, all right. Uh, see, in the last class, we had completed all the four cases. Now we have to start with Lorenz force. So, Fia, regarding the portions that have been missed, that will be covered in your regular classes. But now start learning from here, Lorenz force, since it's a new topic. See, magnetic forces formula. We have studied this is magnetic. Ma'am, which chapter is this? This is chapter four, magnetic effects of electric current. Okay, ma'am. So magnetic. how many, uh, like two pages of concept will be there? Yes. How many pages of concept have been missed, ma'am? See, uh, from this lesson, a major portion has been completed. Biot Servet's law has been completed. Ampere circuit law has been completed. And currently, we are on Lorentz force. So okay. these two topics have been completed. So this I will take separately of yours. Okay. Now from the batch here, from here, you try to study forces between two parallel is left, torque is left. Then this is also a portion that is left. All right. Okay. Okay. See, magnetic forces formula is actually charge and the cross product of velocity and magnetic field. So this is what is the magnetic forces formula. And this formula charge multiplied by electric field, this we have studied as the electric force. Now class, if we were con constantly talking about charge that is placed under magnetic field, right? So if a charge is placed under magnetic field, we use the formula of magnetic force. And if the charge was present under electric influence, right? Electric field was present, a charge was moving. So we said that electric force will be used. But what if a charge is moving where electric field is also existing, magnetic field is also existing? There you cannot neglect one force. No, you have to consider both the forces. So what we do, we add up both the forces. So net force, if a charged particle is moving in a region having both electric and magnetic field, then charge may experience both electric and magnetic force. This means now your net force. This will be equal to electric force plus your magnetic force. So be careful with the questions. If the question asks you or if the question mentions this clearly that a charge Q is moving with certain certain velocity or what in magnetic field with electric field this much or present in a region containing both electric and magnetic field. If both electric and magnetic field you are able to sense that means you have to apply both the formulas means you have have to add both of them q e plus q v cross v from here what you can do you can take q common so what we are left with we are left with e plus v cross b This is the formula. This we call as the Lorentz force. When Lorentz force is mentioned, we have to use this. Now, separately, you have already studied about electric force. You have already studied, studied about magnetic force. For magnetic forces, we use our right-hand thumb rule. Method one, method two, whatever methods which you have studied. For circular methods, we have separated, studied it. For forces, we have studied different. So for right-hand thumb rules, we have a combination of right-hand thumb rules. So that we are going to use. Electric force, remember electric force when we were doing chapter one, electrostatics, that time I told you, when a charge is moving along uh, the presence of an electric field, how we take the direction of force? If it's a positive charge, then the direction is same as that of electric field. Means if electric field is pointing towards the right, electric force will also point towards the right. But if it's a negative charge, we take the direction opposite to the motion of the charge. That is, if electric field is towards the right, our charge would become towards the left. So this is how same things, what you have studied in electrostatics and what you have studied in magnetostatics, you just have to combine and use it. I'll show you a question also, but before that, start noting it from here. First note it down from here, then let us practice certain questions.
Yes, ma'am, done. All those who have written till here, meanwhile, note down the question and start with the solution. I'll discuss it. So a particle of two coulomb is moving with a velocity. V is equal to I cap minus 2 J cap in a region having electric field 2 I cap minus 3 J cap. So you have velo velocity given in the form of Cartesian. Electric field is also given with the help of unit vectors only. And you have magnetic field I cap minus J cap minus 5 K cap. And you have to calculate the net force. So charge is also mentioned. So see, like this, in a region having electric field and magnetic field. So now, you know, you have to apply the formula of Lorentz force. This force particularly with the combination of electric field and magnetic field is known as Lorentz force. So from this, you can easily conclude that you have to calculate Lorentz force. Now, what was the formula of Lorentz force? Right now, only you people have studied. So it's Lorentz force is actually Q multiplied by E plus V cross B. This is the formula of it. So rest of the things leave it. First, let us solve this V cross B. Cross product, I hope all of you have remembered from your class 11th. Though we have revised it also. See, vector V is what? Vector V is I cap minus 2 J cap meter per second. And you have magnetic field as I cap minus J cap minus 5 K cap Tesla. So V cross V, let's solve it in the form of determinants I cap, J cap and K cap. So let's write down all the first coefficients of each. For the velocity, we'll write it first. Why? Because we are having V cross V. So first vector comes first. This is 1 minus 2. And what is the coefficient of K cap over here? There is no K cap over here. So this is 0. Yeah. Coming to this, this becomes 1. J cap's coefficient is minus 1. K cap's coefficient is minus 5. All right. So how do we solve it? For I cap, what do we do? Cross the entire row and column of I cap. Now, what are you left with? You are left with these four. So, what you have to do? Firstly, diagonally down minus diagonally up. So, this becomes C. How do we write it for V cross B? 
this becomes minus 2 into minus 5. Minus 2 multiplied by minus 5. Right? Diagonally down. Minus. Diagonally up. That is minus 1 into 0 will be 0. So this much I cap. <clears throat> Coming to J cap. What have we studied for J cap? For J cap also, you eliminate the entire row and column of J cap. But one thing that you do over here is put right. it as minus J cap. Put this as minus J cap so that your answer becomes the same. Again, diagonally down, cross, diagonally up. So how will we write this? 1 into minus 5 minus 1 into 0. That is 0. Last is k cap, right? So k cap, we write it as plus only. So for k cap, what we are going to do? For k cap also, we are going to do the same thing. Ma'am, why we are writing k as plus? See, actually k, I, k cap and i cap, they are written as positive. Uh, by we are writing j cap as negative is the reason. Because once you eliminate the column of j cap, no. If you do not put a negative sign, you have to do it opposite way means diagonally up minus diagonally down like 1 into 0 minus 1 into minus 5 so either you can do in that way also that becomes same but problem here is that no we try to remember it in the same order like i have remembered it suppose diagonally down minus diagonally up like this i have remembered it so if just by putting a negative sign if, sign, if I'm able to remember that pattern, that will help me remember. Otherwise, what so it, usually it's in the pattern of plus i minus j plus k, like plus, that. Yes. For i cap and k cap, use plus. For j cap, use minus. And then follow this pattern like this. Then subtract and go multiply like that's it if you remember it this is actually a simple simpler method which i find to remember otherwise if you want to make j cap as plus so for j cap you have to change this so it's instead remembering that it's better if you remember this method only so yes one into minus one minus one into minus two whichever four numbers you are left with no go like this multiply them minus multiply them this is the way you can solve any cross product. You, uh, we'll be doing torque also. I think most probably we'll be able to touch it up today only. So torque also will be involved the same thing. So yes, 1 into minus 1. Minus this is 1 into minus 2. So all these variables are set. Now what we just have to find the solution to it. So this is minus 2 into minus 5. This is already 0. So that becomes 10, right? Minus 2 into minus 5 is plus 10 i cap. So this part has been solved. 1 into minus 5 is minus 5. And minus 5 into minus j cap becomes plus 5 j cap. This is also solved. 1 into minus 1, this is minus 1. And this is 2. So this becomes 2 into minus 1. This becomes 2 minus 1. That is 1. So plus k cap. Right? So we have solved this first part. Now this doesn't complete our answer. This doesn't complete the answer. Why? Because this is just v cross v. You have to add e also to it. Right? So let's add e to it first. E plus V cross V is what? See, V cross V is 10 I cap plus 5 J cap plus K cap. And what is E vector? Electric field is already given to you in the question. 2 I cap minus 3 J cap. So this is 2 I cap minus 3 J cap. So this becomes 10 I cap plus 2 I cap. That becomes 12 I cap. 5j cap minus 3j cap, this becomes 2j cap and this k cap is left with itself. So this is E plus V cross B. What is our final answer? How do we write the net force? Q multiplied to this E plus V cross B. And our charge is 2 coulomb. 
So two multiplied to this equation. So if you multiply two, that becomes 24 I cap plus four J cap plus two K cap. This is the net resultant force. And what do we call this force as? What is the name given to this force? Lorentz force. Lorentz force. Very good. This force is known as Lorentz force. So mathematically, you solve it in this way. Theoretically, you just remember this formula. That is sufficient. You just you should know how to solve cross product. Cross product, those who have forgotten, please revise it from your class 11th. If you need help, let me know. Because the upcoming TOR portion also involves your cross product. So cross product, please revise it. Okay, note it down. Some of you haven't noted the question also, no? Note down it.
All of you have completed? All right. Now, one more important formula you have, and this is a very important formula that will be throughout the end of the lesson. This, this doesn't only have application to this portion. You will be using, you have forces between two parallel conductors also. There also it will be used. And in any ways also, this is a very important formula where you will have you know, just the length of the conductor and the current. That will be sufficient for you to calculate the force if you have the magnetic field. See, uh, this derivation is not very important. Just have a look when you are revising. The derivation is not very important, but it can come. So definitely you have to give it a look before revising. But amongst the important topics, this is not the important one of the important derivations but the formula is extremely important so do not forget the formula formula is very important so we have considered a conductor the conducting wire conductor is there of length l so let's assume area of this conductor whatever is the cross sections area no the cross sections area this this area we have assumed to be a so a is the area of cross section direction of current let's say if electrons are moving upwards current is moving downwards so we have assumed that i is giving you the direction of current and this is the current itself it's not only the direction it is telling you the current also itself and number density of electrons means in one meter cube how much electrons are present in one meter cube if i just take a segment of one meter cube and then analyze how many electrons are present. That is what is meant by number density of electrons. So number of electrons per unit volume in one meter cube, how many electrons are present? This is what is meant by number density of electrons. Now, if I give you a conductor like this, this is a conductor that is present. A cylindrical wires are usually taken as conductors if nothing specifically is being mentioned. Length of the wire is L. A is the area of cross section. So if area is the cross section, then area multiplied by length gives the volume. So I have the volume as area multiplied by the length. Means area of cross section multiplied to the length of the entire conductor. So area multiplied by length, that is the volume. And total number of electrons now it would be what? Number density means number of electrons per unit volume number of electrons in one unit volume it was n so for al that means this much volume how many electrons will be present just multiply them right number of electrons in one unit volume it was n and what are the what is the volume that you have to consider al for this entire conductor so total number of electrons through this entire conductor that would become n a l now Coming to your magnetic force. What is the charge that we are taking? We are talking about electrons because your conductor, force on current carrying conductor in magnetic field and we are talking about electrons which are moving. So let us take electron. Electron is E minus sign. Let me just take the magnitude. So charge is E. Right? We have the formula, no? Q, V cross B for the magnetic force that I'm considering because right now no electric field we are talking about. We are just talking about the magnetic field. So E is the charge. What is the velocity? What is the velocity? Can anyone of you tell me a velocity with which electrons drift? Which velocity is that? Drift velocity. Drift velocity. Very good, Chavez. So it means the velocity with which the electrons are drifting. So we consider here drift velocity cross multiplied to magnetic field. Now, write down the formula. Total number of electrons. What is the total number of electrons that is present, that are present, number of electrons? N-A-L-E V-D cross B. Can any one of you remember this? We had something related to this. N, E, A, V, D. In current electricity, we current. have I current. current. Very good. Yes. It is I. N, E, A, V, D. This is actually equal to the 
current. That's why that time also I had told you it was a very important relation. It has its significance till the end of the lessons also. So what does the formula now become? I L cross B, a very important formula class. This formula, no, this derivation is not so very important, but this formula is very important. This formula is used throughout. You, you will notice how questions become easier if you know this formula. Because most of the cases, no, you will have length of conductor given in the figure, current will be mentioned, and magnetic field will be there in the background. This is the figure that is given in most of the questions. So that is how you have to identify. I'll make you do questions also. Two questions also we'll do. Simple question. From this topic, no, if a numerical comes, that would be the easiest question from your paper. Because just these data will be given to you. You just have to substitute and get the formula. How the question, how this concept will be modified in your exams or how this concept will be tricky is in the way that it would be used in one of the steps. You will have to calculate something else. In between, you will be needing this formula. Otherwise, separate questions from this formula are very less. I'll show you one or two questions also, how simple questions are given through from this topic. Uh, but before that, note it down. And why are we using sine theta? Because you know, for cross product, we consider sine theta. A cross B gives you sine theta. So this is a vector that is given to you. So you take the magnitude of L from here, you take the magnitude of B, current is already present and you take sine theta. And in most of the cases, magnetic field will be either inwards or outwards and the length would, of the conductor would be placed like this. So that means what? Length of conductor is perpendicular. And as soon as this becomes perpendicular, sine 90 degree becomes one. So you just have to put in the, in the formula ILB. This becomes the formula. BIL is the formula that will be helpful in most of the cases. First note now. So in most of the cases, the, it will be sine 90 only. Most of the cases, you will notice by yourself because magnetic field will be given to you like this, either like this, that is inwards or out. This is the symbol for inwards. And this symbol is for outwards, dots are made. So, and length of conductor is usually placed like this. So that makes it perpendicular in most of the questions that I have witnessed. But in specific question, if a specific question, no, an easy question is given to you. So it will mention the conductor is at 30 degree with the magnetic field. So like this, it would be mentioned to you if another angle is mentioned. Otherwise, through the figure that you have to analyze. Note it down. Now, this formula will be helpful in the next segment also.
those who have completed till here, try this question and send me your answers in the chat column. Ma'am. Yes, Chavez. Ma'am, this cross means that magnetic field is inside. Inwards, yes, yes, into the page. Uh, okay. Ma'am, can you show how that uh, different crosses are there, inward and outward cross? Inward and outward crosses means? See, if you see this symbol, this means magnetic field is inwards. If you see this, this means it is outwards. For right, left, we can specify, right? I cap, J cap, K cap. This also you can use for the direction. Or simply you can use right or left also. So these are the key terms used for direction. See, you can notice the length of the conductor. This is placed perpendicular to magnetic field. So directly we have B, I, L, sine 90 degree. Right, this is perpendicular to it. What is magnetic field 2? Current is 5. Length is 10. So magnitude is 100 Newton. But question is magnitude and direction. So except for FIA, other students, we have discussed it in the last class, how to find out the direction. You place your right hand along the direction of current. Take your right hand, curl it along the direction of magnetic field. See where your thumb is pointing. All of you should answer me in the chat column right now. Fia, you also try, take your right hand, put it in the direction of current and curl your fingers towards magnetic field. Check where, where the thumb is pointing, right, left, up, down. Okay, so Arif has answered. Any other student? All of you should answer. Austin, what about you? Oh, ma'am, very good. Very good. Inwards is magnetic field rubber. You have to curl your fingers inwards. You have to check when, where the thumb is pointing. Okay, Fia has also answered. Fia, Raba, Humam, Tarif. See class, if you keep your right hand along the direction of current. First tell me, if you keep your right hand along the direction of current, it should be in such a way that the nails are pointing towards the right. Right. This is how no, you will keep your right hand along the direction of current. Now curl your fingers inwards. Where you have to curl the fingers? Curl your fingers towards the magnetic field. Magnetic field is inwards. Minus I cap. Minus I cap means right. Towards right, Chavez, your answer is. C, C class, keep your right hand along the direction of current. Means you have to keep your right hand pointing rightwards. If you curl the magnetic field inwards, if you curl your magnetic, uh, if you curl your fingers inwards, where is the thumb pointing? Towards us. Yes, someone answered. The thumb is pointing towards us. See, 
Raba. And all of you. If you are keeping your you are keeping your right hand along this direction, right? Your fingers are pointing like this. Now, once you curl the fingers, I'll do one thing. Tomorrow, before this class starts, no, I'll show you also this. Today, the camera isn't working. Tomorrow, I'll show you all. Yes, Rabba, you're asking something? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, after curling, like the thumb is pointing towards us, towards me only. Is it right? Yes, ma'am. It's pointing towards us. Towards you. See, if you keep your hand, this I'll show you tomorrow also. It will be clear when I'll open the camera. No, I'll show you myself. Then it would get clearer. See, if you keep your hand like this, so it would happen your fingers are kept like this, right? So when you curl these fingers, thumb is pointing upwards only, no? How is it pointing towards you? You are keeping your hand in this direction, right? These, the palm is facing towards the screen. The dorsum of your hand is pointing, is facing you. This is how you can. Yes. Yes. Yes, I got it upwards. Like the thumb upwards, is pointing. No? So I think you were initial uh, direction of your hand was, I think, wrong. That's why it was pointing towards you. You must have kept it in such a way that thumb was outwards. See, when you will, if your thumb is pointing towards you, no, it means it you haven't curled your the magnetic field inwards. For curling, you have to keep your hand like this. Then only, no, you'll be able to curl it inwards like this. That gives the direction of thumbs up, the sign of thumbs up. So this is the issue. Yes, Chavez, it would be J cap. You can write this as the complete answer or you can mention it as upwards. Tomorrow I'll show you also this if you people are having any confusion. Like see, this is a question. You have to calculate the magnetic uh, magnitude and direction. So magnitude 10 meters, 5 amperes to Tesla. So magnetic force, this is still same thing. And length is also perpendicular. This symbol is for outwards. Length of conductor is placed. It means 2 into 5 into 10. This is 100 Newton. This is fine till here. What about the direction? Now keep your hand like this. Curl your fingers outwards this time. Tell me what is the direction of current, a direction of force. Left. Just text me in the chat column so I remember who has answered what. Austin, you are correct. Chavez is also right. Uh, Chavez, just check again. Just check again. Uh, Rabba and Chavez, both of you are giving me the same answer. See, magnetic field is outwards. You people are curling your hand still inwards. Curl your hand outwards. Now see, direction of thumb. Tarif, uh, current is only going upwards. So how will the force will also be upwards? You have to place your right hand upwards such that your palm is facing you. Then only, no, you will be able to curl your fingers towards you. Check where the thumb is pointing now. Chavez and Raba. Yes, Fia, correct. Fia is right, Austin is right, Raba, now your answer is right. Now, did you understand, Raba, where you were curling initially? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Correct, answer is right, class, right. See. When you will keep your palm like this, your thumb would be like this and your entire palm would be like this. Now, when the magnetic field is outwards, so you will curl these finger outwards. Thumb is still pointing towards the right. So, Shave is not minus I cap, plus I cap. Initially, I thought you were saying I cap. That's why I said correct. But then I noticed it had a negative sign. It's not minus I cap. Otherwise, that would be left or you can write your answer towards right. Fine, note down these two questions. That completes Lorentz force. Now we'll be using this force to find out if we have two conduct, two parallel conductors. But first note down this.
No, left is minus i cap. Uh, let me tell you this. See, if it is rightwards, that is i cap. If towards the left, minus i cap. Upwards, j cap. Downwards, minus j cap. If it is coming outwards, then it is k cap. If it is going inwards, then minus k cap. This is helpful for your objective questions because that time you'll be having your options. Like in your JE exam, NEET exam, this is helpful for your entrances. But in your subjective answer sheets, you can mention either as I cap, J cap or up or down. All right. Yes, class. Now for a single conductor, we have studied. Single conductor means if you have a straight, simple wire. If I just give you one wire, that you know. But you have special case in your syllabus if two parallel wires are given. 
All right. Now this case study in detail because this is helpful for your entrances also, especially students who are going to appear for NEET examination. Questions. There are plenty of questions that have come from this topic. Force between two parallel wires, and in your CBSE syllabus also, a single same pattern type of question comes, and this derivation can also come in your exam. See, force between two long parallel current carrying wires. They are separated by separation D, and this is by default by convention only this separation is taken as D. So in the formula also you will find it as D only. Now, if I just talk about a single conductor. we have studied about infinitely long wire long wire when i use the term long long means what that they are extending up to infinity long wire whenever long term comes no long solenoid two parallel long wires long axis something long word is mentioned that specifies that the wire is extending up to infinity otherwise two finite wires two finite conductors this would have been mentioned but here we have two long conductors so whenever you have the term long it means the wires are infinite so for infinitely long wire we had a formula initially when we were studying magnetics when we had started with the applications of biot servert law we had seen the formula of infinitely long wire if i want to find out the magnetic field at this point let's say at the second wire due to first wire what should be the fo uh, formula for it check into your notes you people have written it magnetic field due to infinitely long wire what was the formula yes shavesh shavesh no idea rabia at least you people can turn up your pages and look up to the formula mu not i by 2 pi r mu not i by 2 pi r yes this is the formula so mu not what is the current current we have assumed to be i1 2 pi r so <clears throat> what is our separation what is our r we have d so this is magnetic field due to the first wire on the second so how we will calculate force on second due to first our purpose is to calculate force on second due to first means force on second due to first i'll write it in this way so that it is clear that are we calculating force on first due to second or second due to first if i write f21 that means force on second due to first if i write f12 that means force on first due to second all right now see when we are calculating this force no current is force on second wire current is i2 length of both the wires will be same in these types of question always remember the length of both the wires this will be same they will never give you wires of two different length wires of two different length is not in your syllabus not even for your entrances so always remember you will have a single same length for both the wires now i2 now problem here is that class this wire won't be generating magnetic field for itself if this wire is present this wire is having certain magnetic field in its space so the force on this wire no on two it will be because of magnetic field of the first one do you see the difference when you just have this wire it won't be producing force on itself if two wires are present the first one will be generating the magnetic field right so magnetic field will not put b2 like i2 we have put we'll put it as b1 then your sign 90 degree comes so it means i2 l b1 is the formula <laughs> what is b1 we have already kept b1 aside so f21 becomes i2l what is b1 mu not i1 by 2 pi d that's it this is the derivation in just three steps you have your answer first step is to find out magnetic field second step put it in this formula f is equal to bil you obtain thirdly put out the magnetic fields put 1 into 2 put 1 in Hmm. 
and you have your final answer this is your answer let us just rearrange it for a simpler part mu not i1 i2 l divided by 2 pi d this is the formula this is the formula which you have to remember now class if i bring this length over here that becomes force per unit length so for that i'm using the symbol small f because somewhere you will find that force per unit length is given not just simple force for force per unit length what we will do bring this length over here so what do we obtain f21 is mu not i1 i2 by 2 pi d this is specifically if force per unit length is mentioned then only use this formula otherwise for just the force between two conductors use this formula this has to be used only if this is given and class one more thing you have this is f21 f21 means force on second due to the first one right force on second due to the first one if i want to find out no force on first due to second this is force on second due to one if i want to find out force on first due to second so do not do anything it's just the negative of it so it means f12 is actually negative of f21 so f21 is actually negative of f12 this is helpful as your uh if you have this part only And in your question, both the parts are asked. So don't waste your time in performing the entire calculation. Ma'am, can you repeat this again? I couldn't understand. Ah uh, yes, we are. From where did ah uh, from this derivation did you uh, see? No, from the first equation itself, I couldn't understand. <clears throat> see, I'll repeat. Wait, this is a magnetic wire that is given to us. Means it's a normal wire that is carrying current. So it will be producing its magnetic field. So we have the magnetic fields formula as two pi by two pi d for this particular wire. All right. So this is the magnetic field of the first wire. Now we are calculating force on second due to first. So which magnetic field will be used? Magnetic field of first will be used. So we have just studied the formula. No, F is equal to I L cross B. In this formula, we substitute the value of B one. Once you substitute the value, you have the formula mu not i one i two l by two pi d. Just in case, if we have length divided over here, that is force per unit length. For that, we use the symbol small f. That specified that this is force per unit length. In that case, just bring the l over the denominator side. You obtain the formula mu not i one i two by two pi d. Is it clear till now? Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. And others apart from Fia, Homam, Austin, yeah. Fia. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All. Right. Plus one more here. thing that comes over here is that, see, here I had assumed both the wires they were moving in the same direction, right? If Can we have a case where one current is moving upwards, one current is moving downwards, or both downwards? Right. We can have multiple cases. It's not necessary that in the derivation I have assumed both the currents to move upwards. The currents should move upwards only. Now, what about the directions? Directions, no. In force between two parallel wires, this is the easiest. Do not apply any hand, any thumb rule. Just remember. If same direction is there, see. I think I have written also for you. Huh. See, it's if it's same direction, either both the currents are upwards, I one, I two, or both the currents are downwards. This is I one, this is I two, this is I one, this is I two. This is same direction, either upwards or downwards. Conductors will attract. It means if this is first conductor, this is second conductor. it will move towards this it will move towards this. they will attract so no need to even use your right hand thumb rule just check same direction so this will move towards the right this will move towards the left that means they will attract end of the story
that's it what you have to remember and just in case it is if it's the opposite case if the wires are present with opposite currents whether this is up this is down or this is down this is up they will repel that means they will move opposite to each other this is it that you have to remember for their direction that's it no need to apply any rule ah uh, yes one more thing class this comes a lot i have seen this question in your previous years a lot in your even some student school exam also this question has repeated itself define one ampere now how do we define one ampere class from this formula it will be given to you using the formula force between two parallel wires define one ampere this type of question can come in your exam and this has been repeated that's why i have made a separate heading so that you people also make a separate heading in your registers using this formula how will you define one ampere what is the formula mu not i1 i2 divided by 2 pi d this is the formula if we are defining one ampere we have to consider current as one ampere of current because we are defining one ampere separation between the wires that is d this separation between the wires this let us assume as 1 meters now what the force will become the force will become mu not what is mu not mu not is 2 pi 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 i1 i2 1 2 pi d is d is also 1 this becomes 2 so that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 newton now in terms of this formula how can i define it see 1 ampere is the current when flowing through two wires which are separated by 1 meters 1 meter having force per unit length as 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 newton this is the answer to this question see One ampere is the current when flowing through two long conductors separated by one meter gives two into ten to the power minus ten of newton of force and can attract or repel each other. This is the definition of one ampere if it is asked you from the formula of force per unit length. Start noting it from here. Wherever you people get stuck, ask. Get your doubts clear.
Ma'am, so the first formula is for um, infinity wire. The infinitely wire extending up to infinity. Wire. Infinitely okay. long wire. And if even okay. if the term infinite is not mentioned, if even if the word just long is mentioned, that means this is magnetic field for infinitely long wire itself. This I'll tell you separately also, Fia. This is there in your syllabus. You have application of bio servitz law. That will be dealt in your batch. Don't worry.
Ma'am, here force per unit length is the main equation or force between two conductors? No, no, that is the same thing. Force between the two conductors it is. But in the formula, no, from this formula, if we bring down this length here, that becomes force per unit length. So it is standardized also. This formula, no, force per unit length. This is standardized also. So force per unit length is force between the conductors only. But specifically, okay. if in the question, I, I was telling you that if in the question it is said, no, force per unit length, then go by this formula. Don't search for length. Otherwise, the same. Okay, this is the same thing. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, here what means force per unit length? Here this F, yes, force per unit length. Like ma'am, what does it mean force per unit length? See, force per unit length is not actually a different physical quantity. It's just that from the formula, no, if you bring length towards the left hand side. So by default, that becomes four per, force per unit length. But usually, you know, in the questions that we have been doing earlier or the questions that you have faced till now, such formula for force per unit le length is not standardized in any way, right? But right now, no, this formula force per unit length, this becomes a new formula or this is a very standardized formula or a different formula that is being stated. So that's why we just categorize it differently. It's not a different formula. It's under the same heading only. The force between two parallel conductors, um, this is the same thing. It's just that to eliminate length in the formula, we are using this. Yes, so, so if the length is equal to one, then we can use this formula. Yes, if the length is equal to one meter, then just substitute length as one meter. That means... A length is not there in your formula means L is equal to one. If you have length given, if you have specific length, then use the first formula. Suppose in the question it is given force per unit. Why am I telling you know this or why have I separated this formula is that you will face questions where length is missing. And in the formula you have studied length is present. So in those cases, no force per unit length is hidden. I'll make you do these types of questions where you will notice by yourself that length is not mentioned. If length is not mentioned and you do not know, other, then, then what you will do? You will blame the question. You will be searching for length because in the formula, length is required. So this is the same formula. In some of the questions, no, some of the questions you will find that length is not mentioned and the force is asked, not force per unit length. No other term is asked, just force is asked between two conductors, then what will you do? So solve it in the same manner, assuming L to be one or force per unit length is hidden in those questions. That's why I have made you write this formula separately. Clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in this concept, derivation is also important? Uh, yes, yes. This one, no? This derivation is important and this question is also important. This question you will find in your books also. Define one ampere in terms of the force per unit length formula of uh, between two parallel conductors. So this also comes. That's why I've made it separately. And this derivation is also there because magnetic field of the first wire is used. So it's a different thing. Otherwise, students place B2, but you have B1. That's why this becomes important.
please text me done in the chat column once you people have completed writing till here. Uh, Fia, one more thing I wanted to say. Uh, there are certain classes in between. One hour classes are there in between. So class cannot be pre-scheduled. Other students, oh, of your batches, they are having the 